Hello there. What's going on? Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Ellie Moses, a 21 year old law and film student here in Sydney, Australia, making your way through the YouTube universe. Hopefully, you guys can tag along and join the ride. I just saw Godzilla vs. Kong. Just came out of the theater, walked right into my room when I got home, doing my initial reactions and review. This is going to be a non spoiler review for you guys. I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm going to refrain from saying anything about the film. Um, regarding certain plot points, regarding certain characters, whether human or titan. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to give my quick thoughts on the film overall, like soundtrack, uh, cinematography, um, score, monster action, everything being my final ranking. If you guys don't know how my ranking system works, my ranking system is based on Star Wars. So at the top of the ranking system, you have Grandmaster, then you have Jedi Master, then you have Jedi Knight, then you have Padawan, then you have Youngling, and then you have Trash Compactor, and a recently new addition is Geo The Rock. But yeah, that's for another day. This film is not going to get Geo The Rock the bottom ranking, so it's all good. But Godzilla vs. Kong, guys, I just came out of the theater, and I'm going to give you non biased review because I do acknowledge certain bits. Um, I know some of the early reviews, if you go on INDB, people praising it 10 out of 10s. It's not a 10 out of 10 movie, it's not the best movie of all time. Just going to give my quick thoughts on it. Monster action, first of all, that's what you guys want to hear about. Monster action is absolutely fantastic and phenomenal. The visual effects are astounding. Um, it's the best looking MonsterVerse film to date by far out of all the four films. Best looking MonsterVerse. Um, it shows its the special effects are shown off during dark scenes. They're shown off during light scenes. They're shown off during um, sunlight, whatever, dawn, whatever. There's multiple uh, multiple <laughs> multitude of colors in this film it's vibrant it is the best looking monsterverse film to date in terms of certain locations and especially the hollow earth the hollow earth in this film looks absolutely amazing now um don't watch any tv spots of this film because they do spoil how the hollow earth looks and certain sequences within the hollow earth do not watch any tv spots regarding that or refrain from any tv spots in this film because they do spoil a lot a lot and i've watch every tv spot about this film they do spoil a lot refrain from any of the tv spots until this film is officially released um as i said before the hollow earth is absolutely amazing in this film um i wish they explored a bit of the mythology more and the world building regarding this ancient rivalry they do talk about it in passing but they don't mention it anymore or go to a deeper exploration um but it does set up the potential for a film within the hollow earth um, the Hollow Earth is absolutely amazing. There's unique titans and creatures there. Um, not just what you've come to expect, but yeah, it all seen in the trailers even. So there's a lot to explore within the Hollow Earth, and that is one of my favorite bits in the film. The colors are absolutely amazing. The vibrancy shown off in this film is fantastic. There are some shots or that Adam Wingard has done, whether it's CGI animation or cin cinematography, whether it's shot or actually animated, Whatever, cinema. Uh, Adam Wingard has definitely added his own flair to this film. There are some shots which are unique to Godzilla vs Kong, which we've never seen in any other MonsterVerse film. They definitely go all out with certain close-ups of the Titans. Um, doesn't have to be Godzilla or Kong. They definitely go all out with certain close-ups, and the visual effects do stand out. They really show off the visual effects with certain close-ups. There's some homage shots which are absolutely fantastic and I really dug. Um, the monster action is absolutely... I cannot praise the monster action enough. If you're going to see Godzilla vs Kong to see monster action and fights, it's absolutely amazing. And I can say this with chest. I think 75% of the film involves a titan in every scene. Whether it's just a passive um, involvement or fighting there is a titan in 75 percent of this film and that's because the film mainly focuses on kong similar to the trailers kong is the epicenter of this film he's the heart and soul of this film godzilla is more like a side character in this film he shows up when he pleases and that's just more badass for godzilla for me i don't know why i was team godzilla all the way but godzilla just um shows up and does as he pleases in this film he just has his own mindset he has his own goal and objective and does as he pleases and the Kong element of this film is definitely the heart and soul similar to the trailers. And even though I was Team Godzilla throughout and have been always, I maintain that Kong is the strongest um, MonsterVerse film prior to this film. Um, in my opinion, it's just got the best blend of action-packed Titans and humans. And even though I was Team Godzilla all the way because I just love Godzilla, um, 
the film does a great job of making you care for Kong. I couldn't help myself but care for Kong um, during the film. It just does a fantastic job at humanizing him, especially with Gia, um, Alexander Skarsgård's Nathan. I think his name's Nathan. I can't remember his name. It's Nathan something. And Rebecca Hall's character. Um, they are great, actually. Uh, the Kong human side to this film is fine. I thoroughly enjoyed the Kong side. They do a fantastic job at humanizing Kong. They have great camaraderie and chemistry. Alexander Skarsgård, Rebecca Hall, and the young girl who plays Gia. Um, especially Kong being the heart and soul of this film. The human element regarding Kong is absolutely fine. I did not mind it. The human element is actually really strong involving Kong. And this goes on to say, um, my queries and my real, my real, um, I guess, concerns with this film going into it was the human element regarding sort of Team Godzilla involving Brian Tyree Henry's character, um, Julian Dennison, and Millie Bobby Brown's character. And that is definitely the weakest part in the film involving those characters. Um, and there's certain other characters in the film that are completely expendable. I mean, they're sort of main human characters and big actor draws in this film that don't get as much screen time as Kong. For instance, Kyle Chandler's characters, um, not in the film much as you think. He's in it for tops five minutes, not even. And um, yeah, the human element, ghetto, ghetto suburb, that's what we get. Um, the human element involving the Godzilla side, as I said before, Brian Tyree Henley, Millie Bobby Brown, and Julian Dennison seems pretty much forced because the film tends to focus on Kong as the heart and soul of the film. And it's as if they almost forgot about the sort of Godzilla team to the film, sort of trying to figure out why Godzilla's turning bad in the film. And it almost sort of forgets. It's like, oh, we got to go back to these guys. Remember these guys there? And they're really expendable in the film. And the plot line involving their arc in the story, where their arc involves, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but their objectives of the film does lean towards a lot pacific rim 2 and transformers age of extinction plotline vibes there's a lot of sci-fi elements in this film more than you think and that's mainly involving that trajectory with the godzilla characters um even though they're not really in tandem with godzilla as much godzilla doesn't get any human interaction with this film at all um they sort of yeah, as I said before, Godzilla is his own character and does as he pleases. It's completely badass. But yeah, those characters on Team Godzilla trying to find out why Godzilla is acting, like, acting in a certain way. That, yeah, that trajectory, as I said before, leans towards more of a Pacific Rim 2 Transformers Age of Extinction plotline and storyline. Which was completely ludicrous and stupid. And one of the um, climactic elements regarding that plotline is completely ludicrous. And I really really rub it rub me off the wrong way i really didn't enjoy it because it does take away from certain characters within the film and i'm trying not to spoil as much as i can but yeah that's all i'm gonna say guys for godzilla vs kong um cinematography on point monster action absolutely fantastic i saw it my little cousin the theater was clapping there was one guy who was completely annoying in the back of the theater kept always whistling in any kong scene when any when kong had some like triumphant moment or euphoric moment um he completely started whistling and i'm not going to show any trailer footage in this review i'm just giving you my quick thoughts here because the trailer does spoil more than you think and once you see the film you'll realize that so i'm not going to spoil that um i think i was let down by is the score in the film particularly the godzilla score from junkie xl the score revolving godzilla is very I mean, it's been released, but it's rehashed a lot throughout the film. It's the same score throughout. It's, there's no diversity. There's no callbacks to any other Godzilla score, for instance, from King of the Monsters. But yeah. And as I said, with the human element, the Kong side of the story and the human element, absolutely fine. I find it perfect. There's one character revolving around the Kong plotline who needs to be there in the story, but is completely expendable. Doesn't have much to say, but um, yeah, is, there's, a, there's a lot of expendable characters. But the Kong, that trio with Gia, um, Nathan... I think Nathan Wind, his name is. Um, can't remember. Alexander Sarsgaard's character, Rebecca Hall's character. Absolutely fine and great. I really enjoyed the Kong element. I mean, as a whole, I'd say the human element is much better than Godzilla King of the Monsters, which I found really poor. Really poor. The human element is really hard to get through. But the human element is actually is easy to get through in this film because, as I said before, as Kong is the heart and soul and you're spending so much with Kong and that trio, 
Um, and as I said before, 75% or 80% of the film involves a Titan in each scene. It's much easier to get through. And yes, the Titan action is absolutely fantastic. There's not many cutaways. There's a fantastic five minute one take fight with Godzilla and Kong just going at it. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you guys want to know, there is a definitive winner between the two. I'm not going to spoil who wins, but yeah, there is a definitive winner. But as I said, guys, um, if I was to give a ranking for Godzilla vs. Kong 2021 on HBO Max or theaters, whatever you saw it in, I saw it in the theaters. Absolutely amazing. The sound design was phenomenal. Cannot fault the sound design. Absolutely riveting in the theater. I saw it. I'm going to give Godzilla vs. Kong the rank of Jedi Knight. If you're going for kaiju monster action in this film, this film absolutely delivers on all that. And yes, hopefully you guys enjoyed. It's been Ellie Moses. Um, if you've enjoyed the content, enjoyed this review, um, drop a like, subscribe. If not, it's all good. But yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys watching the video. As always, Take care. We need Kong. The world needs him. Remember that. God bless.